What is going on, you guys? Alex Chasen back here with a brand new video. Hopefully, you're having a great day, afternoon, or night, wherever you guys are in this world. And for today's video, let's talk about the Cleveland Cavaliers, who have been on a tear. 17-3 and in their last 20 games. They are 33-16 and in sole position of second place in the Eastern Conference. Yes, in a very tight Eastern Conference, just one game above the Milwaukee Bucks and New York Knicks. But they are sitting lonely in second place as of today. And like I said, on a tear. They are 9-1 in their last 10 on a seven-game winning streak. And like I mentioned earlier, 17-3 in their last 20 games. Right now, when I'm recording this, it's NBA trade deadline day. This video will come out today. I will make a trade deadline video later. It'll be up tomorrow morning. I will talk about that later. Let's talk about the Cleveland Cavaliers and why are they so good? And the biggest question, can they keep this up when it matters? Because last year, five games out of the playoffs against the Knicks. Can J.B. Bickerstaff, Donovan Mitchell, and this Cavs team keep this up? Let's jump right into it and talk about it. Last night, the Cavs beat the Wizards, but that said, that's not an overly hard team to beat. So let's go to the game prior. They beat the Sacramento Kings, who are struggling this year. They just lost against the Pistons, so maybe not the best example as well, but definitely a much better team than the Washington Wizards, of course. And let's just go through this box score because it's magical. Evan Mobley, plus four. Jared Allen, plus 22. I know plus minus doesn't show everything, but when everyone is plus... I mean, that doesn't get more beautiful than that right there. But then for, you know, real stats, Evan Mobley, 11, 7 assists, 14 rebounds. I should really just say 11 points and 14 rebounds and 7 assists because he should be getting those boards regardless. But he also had 7 assists, 2 blocks, of 1 block, excuse me, 2 steals, I should say. Jared Allen, the man has been on a tear. In his last 20 games, he has averaged 18, 13, and 3 assists in the last 20 games. The man has been on an absolute tear, like the all-star version of Jarrett Allen. That version that we know, yeah, he's been playing like that as of late. And he's proving he is still capable of doing exactly what he did his all-star year. And I know he's still very young, but there's talks of like, oh, that was just a one-off, a one-year wonder. No, Jarrett Allen may not be an all-star, but he is playing like an absolute menace, helping the Cleveland Cavaliers to be on this absolute tear. And then Darius Garland, who has been out for a very long time with a fractured jaw, he put up 11 with five assists. Solid night shooting, but then the man himself, Donovan Mitchell, 29 points, 11 for 20 from the field, 5 for 11 from 3. Overall, a very efficient game from him. And then Max Struess, last season, he was the Miami Heat's silent killer, but now he's a loud killer in the starting lineup for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Put up 22 points, 8 for 13 from the field, 6 for 10 from 3, along with 5 rebounds, 2 assists, and 2 steals as well. A plus 20 in the plus minus. Talk about someone who had a terrific playoff run with Miami Heat and earned himself a bag last summer, now being a starting player for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Shout out Max Drews. He started off as a Celtics player in Summer League. We cut him, the Bulls picked him up, and the rest has been history, paving his way, earning his spot in the NBA every single game. Shout out to Max Struess right there. And then off the bench, of course, Karis LeVert, one of the most premier, just overall talented scorers. He never really turned into that star because he's faced a lot of injuries in his career. But with that being said, he has turned himself into one of the most premier bench scorers. 17 points, 6 for 12 from the field, 3 for 4 from 3, a very efficient night. And then from the field, I mean 58% from the field, 56% from 3. A concern of mine looking at this game was they were only 64% from the line. Luckily, the Cavs have one of the top defenses in the league, but 64% from the line, that's disappointing because when you're shooting so well, you should be doing a lot better at the line, but they, they did not have a great night from the line on that standpoint. But why are the Cavs doing so good? I mean, it all starts on that defensive end for this Cavaliers team. On the season, the Cavaliers give up the third least points in the entire league at just 109 points per game, which averages out because against the Kings there, they only gave up 110 points. Exactly, 110 points. So that was around their season average. But in the last three games, it's gone down to 105. So they're just killing it in all ends of the court. But like I said, J.B. Bickerstaff and this Cavs team with Evan Mobley, Jared Allen, Donovan Mitchell, it all starts on that grit and grind defensive end for this team. And they prove that every single night. But then on the offensive end, that's where they tend to struggle. But they've been making it work. They average not the most points in the league. They're around the middle of the pack, averaging 114 points per game at 17th place in the league. But in the last three, they've been scoring 122 around that per game. So they're figuring something out on the court. But the thing is, though, 
when I look at teams that don't average the most points, I look at their defense. And if their defense is like, you know, middle of the pack or below average, that's obviously where, ga where games are lost. But since the Cavs have one of the most premier defenses in the league, top five in points per game given up, they're at three. I'm just not concerned when they're only scoring 114 points per game. Because even if the shots aren't falling, you know they're not going to give up on the defensive end of the ball. And that has been proven in this 20-game span where they've won 17 of their last 20 games. And they continue to prove that all the time. So I just wouldn't be concerned on that standpoint. Now, if I'm a team like the Toronto Raptors, who average around the same points per game, but they also give up probably the, around the same points per game. Let me check. Let me see where the Raptors fall in points given up per game. They give up 117 points per game. Yeah, I would be concerned there because they're giving up more points than they score. Obviously, that's a concern, but the Cavs are the polar opposite. They Their defense is their bread and butter. Offense, sometimes they struggle, or sometimes they have great nights like that Kings night, but at the end of the day, defense will win them ball games. but Donovan Mitchell and the rest of that offensive stars on that team, they will show up when needed. Moving on to a stat that a lot of people don't really discuss because it's not like it's a major thing, but I like to get into the nit and gritty of why teams are being successful. And this is a prime example right here. The Cavaliers rank in the bottom 10 for most personal fouls per game at just 18 per game. Just for an example, the most is around 23 per game by the Indiana Pacers. The Cavaliers rank at eighth with 18 per game. And it just shows that they're a very mentally sound team, especially right now. And in their last three games, they've only been giving up around 15 personal fouls per game. For a team such like the Cavaliers, who are firing on off offense, they're firing on defense, I like to look a little bit deeper and see what else is working really, really well. And they're not playing sloppy basketball, giving teams easy buckets at the free throw line, killing so many teams all the time in this league. They're not doing that. And on this 20 game span, something also has to be working besides playing great defense and scoring the ball and playing mentally sound defense and not just following guys, sending them to the line, giving them easy points. You're going to win ball games doing that. And so far on this span, the Cavs have been doing that this season. And that's something come playoff time that will be a huge key that no one really will, will discuss. It'll just go under the radar. No one really will care. But if they're not fouling, sloppy fouls, I should say, because there are times and places where fouling, sending someone to the line works. But sloppy fouls in particular, that will save you come playoff time. Those mental mistakes, if you're not doing them now, hopefully you won't do them in the playoffs because that, you know, hopefully that mentality can stay. And as of right now, the Cavs have been playing great mentally sound basketball so far this season. Something else that I've noticed in the last 20 games for the Cavs that I hope can continue for the rest of the season, and I think it will, I don't know why it would change, Donovan Mitchell has been spreading the love with the basketball. It definitely helps that Darius Garland has missed a bunch of time. He's back now, so maybe it will go down a little bit. But if it, but in Donovan Mitchell's last 20 games, he has, he has averaged around eight assists per game. That's a career high. Now on the season, it's only around six. But just in the last 20 games, it's been around eight assists per game. If he can keep that up with also averaging around 30 points per game and five rebounds, not only will the rest of the team just improve immensely because he's sharing the love, finding the open guys on the court, which he's been doing amazingly. Max Struess had 22 points. What was he like? Six for 12 from three? He was six for 10 from three. I don't know exactly where all those threes came from, but he's not someone who's going to create his own three. I'm assuming that's a Donovan Mitchell driving kick to Max Struess or something of that kind. Because in this game, Donovan Mitchell had five assists, which is under his average for the last 20 games. But even five assists is amazing. Let's look at this starting unit. Seven assists, three assists, five assists, five assists, two assists. Off the bench, seven assists, two assists, two assists, two assists. They're sharing the love. They're sharing the basketball for a total of 36 assists against the Sacramento Kings. That's beautiful. And those are just little things. A lot, like I said earlier with the fouls, not making mental mistakes, getting guys easy buckets. The same thing then applies to sharing the love for the basketball, making that extra pass and not being selfish. Now, am I saying they're going to be a championship team? Absolutely not. You got the Celtics, the Knicks, the Cavs are now up there, and then the Bucks. Any four of those teams could be the Eastern Conference Finals champion. But I'm just saying, as of right now, they have all the characteristics firing offensively, defensively, mental mistakes-wise, not having too many of them, and then sharing the love for the basketball. All those things tell me right there, they are playing mentally sound basketball and they're doing it at an extremely high level. One of the highest levels in the league right now, if not the highest in the league as of today. Just circling back to their free throw percentage, because that's probably their only concerning thing as of right now. They're ranked 22nd in the league at 77% from the line per game. 
that's not great because they shot 65% against the Kings. But come playoff time, every team, they're going to try to utilize your biggest weakness. And if your biggest weakness is at the line, they may be more likely to hack you. They, be, they may be more likely to do sloppy fouls because they know you probably won't have a high percentage of making all of them. So that's just one little concern there that needs to be figured out because you got to be making your free throws. This is the NBA. I'm not going to really dive too deep into that. But I did want to circle back onto that because that was one concerning thing that we saw in that Kings game earlier. I wanted to see if that was a trend all year. It looks like it might be that they definitely need to work on come playoff time. Work on your free throws. I can't believe I'm saying that, but I guess they need to. That said, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. And I'm, But in all seriousness, I am extremely happy where the Cleveland Cavaliers are as of right now. 17-3 and three in their last 20 games. Currently the second seed in the Eastern Conference. It's going to be hard to get to the Celtics position there at first place. They're up by a good amount of games. It's going to be hard to do it unless the Celtics have a complete fallback, which you never know they might. But that said, they can snag second if they continue to make a little bit of headway above the Bucks, above the Knicks. We'll have to see it because they're all very bunched up as of right now. But there's a possibility they could start to make some headway, especially on this the, the run they're on right now. See you guys tomorrow with NBA trade deadline winners and losers. Like always, peace out.